let me make it clear. If the Mets sign J.D. Martinez in five minutes while we're on this show, I'm not going to throw my microphone out we're the not window. Leaving. And, yeah, I'm not going to be angry that the Mets signed a guy that posted a 900 OPS. That was Joe DeMeo two days ago, and this is us tonight on an emergency episode of the Mets Pod presented by Tri-State Cadillac. Elevate your style in a Cadillac. Go from bold to bolder in an SUV, from inspiring to awe-inspiring in a sedan. Visit your Tri-State Cadillac dealer today. And the Mets have elevated their lineup with J.D. Martinez. I'm your host, Connor Rogers, joined as always by my co-host, Joe DeMeo. Joe, we said... We're not going anywhere if this one happens, and we got our surprise as opening day is right around the corner. Your thoughts on the Mets putting the big bat in the middle of their lineup this late in spring? Well, first off, I'm glad I didn't say on the show this week that if the Mets signed J.D. Martinez, I would throw my microphone out the window because then I'd have to be spending some money on something. But if you're watching on YouTube, the mic is still here. We're still here. We're ready to go. But obviously, this is a... A uh, significant move for the Mets. And we were used to doing emergency podcasts the last couple of years. It felt like every other week during the offseason. Didn't have one this whole entire offseason. And now here, a week before opening day, we're recording to talk about J.D. Martinez joining the Mets. And what it comes down to is this is a proven middle-of-the-order bat. You know, doesn't come sans risk. He's 36 years old. Sure. He has a history of back injuries. Um, had a couple stints on the IL last year. But guess what? He hit 33 home runs, drove in over 100 runs, had a near 900 OPS, uh, gets the stick in the lineup, presumably right behind Pete Alonso, and provide that protection that uh, Mets fans have been looking for since the designated hitter has come into play. That's exactly right, Joe. The we, we discussed this on the last pod, is that there are two conversations with the Mets lineup. There is the lineup as it stands at the time, and there is the ultimate solution, just from a pure offensive perspective, that is if you insert J.D. Martinez, because I think the golden question has been, where is the protection for Pete Alonso? I think you and I have been much higher on year two Francisco Alvarez than most, maybe that was a shot of optimism from us for such a young player, but we think his power is really going to play. Obviously, the fan base, and I totally get this side of it, you want the proven thing. You want the sure thing in the middle of the lineup, and that's where the Mets opted to go here. It's not that Vientos hasn't been hitting home runs in spring. He's hit quite a few. He's been honestly fine, not great. I think the consistency is an issue, but if you're looking for a guy that hits the ball hard for a young player, he's absolutely done that, but... J.D. Martinez, the record speaks for itself, right? This is a guy, you know, two out of the last three years that the OPS has almost been around 900, even in 2022, which, you know, you kind of look at and consider a down year. The OPS is still a hair below 800. That's a big improvement in this Mets lineup. You brought up the 33 home runs last year. I mean, this is that big power bat that is truly no glove, all bat. But how it rounds up a lineup that rounds out a lineup that, we know Brandon Nimmo is going to be leading off. We know Francisco Lindor probably just sits in that two hole, and rightly so. If you want to bat Pete Alonso third, well, now the cleanup spot, that door is open for J.D. Martinez to just stick there, and you get a little deeper because you still have a former batting champ in Jeff McNeil. You still have a guy that we think has 30 home run and potential in Francisco or Alvarez. Now whatever you get out of Starling Marte offensively I don't want to call it a bonus because the Mets need Starling Marte for this team to complete for a compete for a playoff spot. But dang, you feel a lot better about it if you get anything out of him because it lengthens the lineup. So offensively, Joe, as much as it's just one player, it feels like J.D. Martinez is a true impact bat for a lineup that wasn't a poor lineup, wasn't a weak lineup, but it felt like it was missing that one piece in the middle of it. It's like the opposite of the Edwin Diaz effect from last year, that when Edwin Diaz went down, everyone had to move up a spot in the bullpen, and it kind of messed with that whole kind of trajectory of what the bullpen would be in right. 2023. Now J.D. Martinez gets to shift everybody down, and it makes the lineup look deeper. It makes the lineup look just kind of overall stronger. And now when you look at 
you know, maybe Starling Marte and Brett Beatty are your seven and eight hole hitters. And if that's the case, you kind of just need one of them to be good. If they're both good, this could be, you know, a top flight type of lineup. And I don't even think that's hyperbolic to say. Like when you talk about that top of Nimmo, Lindor, Alonzo, J.D. Martinez, McNeil and Alvarez or Alvarez and McNeil, however you want to do the five, six kind of, I guess maybe that's dependent on who you're facing. But this, this signing, what it does to me, it obviously raises the floor of this roster, which has been something that David Stearns had been trying to accomplish all off season, but it also raises the ceiling at the same time, because as high as you and I are on Mark Vientos and we we're hopeful what he could do in 2024, the best Mark Vientos year is probably what JD Martinez will reasonably give you. So it it's just an overall just trickle effect in the lineup and just improves where the Mets just kind of look as far as when you project ahead to what could they be in 2024. Uh, this is obviously a huge move for that. And an underlying thing, you know, with this team, they have recently struggled against left-handed pitching. And this is a bat that slaughters left-handed pitching. I mean, the career OPS is, you know, uh, a significant number sitting at over 900 last year, over 900. I mean, this is a player that just traditionally the career OPS is 954 against left-handed pitching. I mean, JD Martinez, he's a good hitter, no matter who's on the mound. Basically at this point, he's not, it's not that Martinez struggles against righties, but a total matchup player against lefties as well. So it lengthens the lineup. It improves the Mets against lefties, which has definitely been an issue with the offense as a whole. And then Joe, one more thing I kind of want to throw your way is what do you think this does for the clubhouse? Because to me, we saw the Mets operate this off season in a way where it was kind of a step back approach, right? David Stearns is here. Okay. We're going to see what we have. And they've used spring the spring for that. There's no denying that we want to see what we have in the young talent. We want to see what we have with the big league club. And we're also not going to operate with the typical urgency that we have in previous Steve Cohen years where, hey, we got a need. Let's slap $45 million on it. Let's go get this player here or there. Let's sign a four-year deal right here or a big money two-year deal. This team didn't operate with that urgency in the offseason. But now, and I know it's a one-year $12 million deal with some of the money deferred, but the reality is with the tax threshold that they're crossed, this feels like a little shot in the arm from Steve Cohn and David Stern saying, we actually believe in this club. And we feel like this was a piece that was really, really needed. And now, hey, Pete Alonzo, one of the better, you know, run producers in baseball offensively over the last decade now hits behind you. Hey, Francisco Alvarez, you're going to be around J.D. Martinez. Francisco Lindor, a veteran on this team that knows a thing or two about how good Martinez is offensively. It feels like there is also a mentality effect on the clubhouse bringing this guy in at this stage of the spring training, uh, you know, part of the season. What this shows to me is David Stearns believes what he says to us publicly because yeah. David Stearns has been steadfast and he's been pushed by SNY's Andy Martino and by other reporters. He says the expectation is to be a playoff team, not the hope, because guess what? That's all 30 teams hope they're in the playoffs. But David Stearns has said since the outset of spring training, since he was down in Dominican in January, he expects this team to be a playoff roster. This move just further emphasizes that he believes in this roster, because if he thought that the Mets were set up to be a 77 win team, that if everything in the world goes right, they might win 83 or 84 games and they'll be contending at the end of the season for a playoff spot. This says, I believe in the roster. He saw what everyone showed this spring training. He talked about in his press conference a few days ago how the pitchers showed up and did exactly what the Mets asked them to do this offseason. The players have showed up in shape and ready to go. We talked about that on the show this week, Connor, how, you know, knock on wood, they've been healthy through spring training other than just a Senga and a couple other things. But to me, this is a clear message that we believe in the team that we put together. We believe in you, the players. So here's a little shot in the arm, as you put it, to the lineup and just 
let's go play ball. I mean, it, it's got to increase the excitement, not just for uh, the fans, but for the players in the clubhouse, for the front office, for a manager like Mendoza, who was going to have to answer questions every single day about why are you batting Jeff McNeil clean up today? Why are you batting, uh, you know, Starling Marte third today or whatever the case may be? This makes setting a lineup so much easier. Stability is what it brings when you have this kind of offensive presence for a team that has been really fortunate to have stability, whether it's Nimmo in the leadoff spot, Lindor up in that top three, and Pete Alonso. But the question recently, Joe, has always been what's behind them, right? And that's exactly what Martinez brings smack in the middle of the lineup is that stability that you've talked about. And we've been very honest about maybe some of the deficiencies or some of the weaker spots of this team. I think you and I have been pretty high on this bullpen and we've been quietly um confident in the offense to an extent of what an offense in baseball has to do but the pitching without Senga is undeniably a question mark in terms of who's going to step up who's going to give you length who is going to be a stopper when you're on a losing streak and hey we need six shutout innings today right you know there's a lot of hope that Severino can rebound back to form. Tyler McGill can figure it out this year with how promising he's looked in the spring. Sean Manaya is he going to be a guy that is going to be able to really, you know, round into form here as well in the mold of a Severino, although he doesn't have the track record Severino has. He has had flashes of consistency. But those are all giant question marks from the one to five spot, especially until Senga is back. What we think is going to be after Memorial Day. You know how you help out quit, uh, pitching that is let's call it high variance on its best day, right? You get more offense. You become a more potent offensive team. And that is undeniably what a 30 home run bat does for the middle of that. So this to me is Stearns using his patience and understanding the big picture of a team and understanding how the Mets are going to need to stay afloat the first two months of the season without their ace and with some you know, question marks in the rotation right now. You simply get more offense for that price. And this is also the beauty of having an owner that says, you know what? If you think this is right for the team, go do it. Not penny pinching. And shout out to Steve Cohen for giving the green light on this kind of move. This is just an organization that is flowing all together at once. That's what this is a move that it doesn't feel like happens for the Mets, you know, a half decade ago, a decade ago. And that's a really promising feeling if you're a Met fan. It shows, and Steve Cohen, when he met with the media, when was asked about other moves, he basically said, that's up to David. If David yeah, makes a recommendation to me, I'll go with it. So he deferred to David, which is fine, but this is evidence that David Stearns probably said to Steve Cohen, if we could get JD at this dollar value, it makes sense. Because when you bring the luxury tax in, we've talked about this ad nauseum over the last couple of months, and even on this week's show, if you had to pay JD Martinez a contract that would cost him you know, that would cost Steve Cohen $35 million. That doesn't really make much sense. But a contract that I don't know how the deferrals play in, but let's just say the number is a heck of a lot lower than that. And it's much more in a, a palatable place where it made sense for both Stearns and Cohen. It shows that this appears, it's obviously early and we got years to go and they've literally never played a baseball game uh, officially yet as president of baseball operations and owner. But this feels like this is a marriage that's going to work. All right. The last thing we got to button up here, Joe, is, of course, the trickle effect for specifically Mark Vientos. And I think we could loop Brett Beatty into this a little bit, too, although it's not like the Mets went out and blocked their base or anything like that. But the reality is Vientos, if he's going to be out on the diamond, it would be at third base, which does have an impact on Brett Beatty. How do you see the signing of Martinez impacting both of those young guys now going forward. So Brett Beatty, I think, is going to get the opportunity to be the majority third baseman. And frankly, he's earned it. I know we, we've talked about him being up and down. When you look at, I know we you don't want to harp too hard on spring training statistics, but having an OPS over 850 in the month of March, that's pretty good. And now he's starting to pull the ball and pull the ball in the air. I think Beatty's set up for the, the true opportunity. Uh, Mark Vientos, the Mets have two choices here with Vientos. One, you send him back to AAA where he doesn't need work offensively. He'll hit 340 and hit a home run every other day in AAA. 
but you put them at third base every single day and you say, that is the Brett Beatty insurance in case things don't work out. Or you have option two, which is you carry Mark Vientos on the roster, and that's another kind of defensive deficient player on the roster, but he can spell Brett Beatty against left-handed pitching. He could spell J.D. Martinez because, you know, as great as he is, He's 36. He has had a history of back issues. He's not going to go play 150 games for the Mets this year. He's going to get days off. And Vientos could slide in in DH on occasion. Or if there's a day where Pete Alonso needs a DH, Vientos could play first base. So it's just a matter of how, how do you want to balance this roster and how important is it for Mark Vientos to get a lot of reps defensively, not offensively. And uh, I think that's one of the decisions that – David Stearns and the Mets will have to make here in the next week as we get to roster crunch down where now we were talking about DJ Stewart versus G-Man Choi. Now it's Mark Vientos versus DJ Stewart versus G-Man Choi versus Zach Short, maybe? Who knows? Do they want another additional defensive infielder? Uh, or maybe it's waivers. There's going to be players that are available from other teams. So Vientos is definitely up in the air right now. And, um, you know, that's... That's the nature of the beast. Sometimes it's, that's the way it goes. I think Vientos uh, warranted a shot, but you, it's hard to argue with what the Mets did with J.D. Martinez tonight. We constantly discuss the trickle effect on rosters in baseball, and obviously Martinez signing, as we broke down, has a trickle effect on the lineup, everyone around them. But even for the team with Vientos and Beatty, while those guys at times this year might be frustrated not getting playing time consistently, and it'll probably be one of them at a time that's kind of dealing with being a bench bat. The reality here is, Joe, that the Mets were betting on both of them to be a hit this year. And when you look across, you know, what they've done, or should I say haven't done, and just prospects in baseball – that would have been a reach. It would have been great if both of them become hits, but now you're in a situation where you can ride the hot hand at the plate. You can kind of go with the flow. You have a little bit of injury protection as well. And young hitters, it felt like coming into the year, if Vientos or Beatty go through a really, really rough stretch, what was the Mets answer to give them a mental break? Was it Joey Wendell at third base? Was it, Luke Voigt being the DH, right? Like, not the prettiest of solutions. Now, while, yes, you won't get to see them as much and maybe even get that clear defining answer that they're ready to roll with Martinez clogging the DH spot. And I say clogging in the nicest way because it's a great thing that Martinez is in the DH spot. But now, Beatty and Vientos, it's bottom line competition for at bats at third base. And maybe matchups come into play. I mean, Joe, there might be a world where. Hey, Vientos is clobbering lefties like he did in the minors. He's going to see the lefties. Hey, Beatty's been a little bit more consistent against both sides. Beatty's going to get a lot of the reps. Hey, this guy's taking a step defensively while this guy hasn't. It just feels like they've given Mendoza a little bit more to work with here. They have for sure. And honestly, competition often breeds results, right? right. That's, that's the whole objective of it. So while... It may stink for Mark Vientos today. Like, I'm sure Mark Vientos doesn't feel too uh, happy, you know, in, in the moment. Motivate you. Like, you know, third base is not Brett Beatty's job for life. Like, he he still has a lot to prove, too. So sh continue to show up, do your thing, and compete. And, you know, third base is going to be open. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how, how it progresses throughout the year. And like you said, I'm sure there'll be a lot of matchup-based things. Uh, but this just overall makes the team deeper. And Connor, when you think about it, I was, and I'll even admit this, this whole time, I, I was really focused on Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos getting their opportunity. And I was sort of maybe subconsciously neglecting the what if it really doesn't work? What do the Mets do? And when you present the options, and no offense to Joey Wendell and, and Luke Voigt and, you know, G Man Choi and, DJ Stewart and and those those fine gentlemen. No offense to them. Like if you are inserting them as your everyday third baseman and DH, you're probably not heading towards that playoff expectation. And JD Martinez just kind of flips that expectation on its head. This is the Mets Pod presented by Tri-State Cadillac. Elevate your style in a Cadillac. Go from bold to bolder in an SUV. From inspiring. 
to awe-inspiring in a sedan. Visit your tri-state Cadillac dealer today. Be sure to subscribe to the Mets Pod at Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can watch every episode, of course, here on the YouTube channel where, well, if you subscribe there as well for a ton of great content, it will also be our mailbag drop point. You can still tweet questions at Joe. You can still, of course, drop us a review with a question in it. Those will take priority. We'd really appreciate it. So you have a lot of places to leave your questions right now. Of course, once again, the comments on YouTube, we will check those every week from the previous show to grab those questions for the following week's show. Next week, massive episode. It's our big season preview. We are working on big plans for that show. So check it out. But a big signing by the Mets late in spring training with the addition of J.D. Martinez. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll catch you next week.